this upcoming uh, Senbet or, or Shabbat, the Shabbat, which will be uh, July 23rd, 2011, is a very special um, Senbet. We call this a King Sabbath. When the Sabbath day and such days as the Earth Strong or the Earth Day, what some may call the birthday of Hala Selassie, but we know it as the Earth Day of the Son of Man, when, the, when it coincides with a, a, a Sabbath day, a sabbatical day, or a high holy day, this makes it especially a very special day and also a special a sign. In other words, this is a, this is a significant sign. There's, there's, there's a lot of signs. So we are not a generation that really seeketh after a sign, but we're a generation that can see the many signs, if not all of the signs in our time you understand, are visible to those who know what the vision of the King of Kings and Christ is. So, July 23rd, 2011, mark this date. It's very special. It's a very spe it's a King Sabbath. And, and here we are coming into what we had proclaimed since 1992 as the, the King Sabbath. And, and there's some more teachings on that that we're going to bring forward, as well as some older archival file and and, and documentation that we're hoping to, to make available so ones can know well that we're not new to this, but I and I are seeking to be true and faithful to this, to the King of Kings and to His Christ, to Jah and His Messiah, as Psalm 2 um, makes very clear. So the fire key psalms, there are fire key psalms, and there are certain special psalms that should be chanted, should be sung. This this should be a, 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 a time of great joy. You understand, know, almost like the Simchat Torah, the time of, of rejoicing in, in, in the Word made flesh, in the birth of the Son of Man. So July 23rd, the, the Senbet or the Sabbath, the upcoming Sabbath, right now it's like Thursday. We're here in Old York, or so-called New York, you understand, um, in the belly of the beast in New York City. And as many of you all probably already know and probably experienced firsthand, we're going through a heat wave. A heat wave, they say, like, unlike anything that has, that has occurred in America, anything like this, since the 1950s. So there's a lot of records being broken. There's a lot of um, signs being manifested. But now within our order, within the order of the King of Kings and His Christ, the July 23rd, we know, is the Metasebi, or the memorial of the birth of the Son of Man, or Lij Teferi, better known as Ras Teferi, His Imperial Majesty Kedamawi Haile Selassie. Now, the Senbet, it, this will be the 43rd, therefore the 23rd of July, 2011, this particular year, 2011, coincides now with the 43rd sabbatical reading and feeding that we know, according to the Emperor's Amharic Bible, as Guzo, Guzo, Guzo. In the Hebrew and the, and the, and the Texas Receptus or the Masoretic Hebrew, it's known as Masé, Masé. And Masé, Guzo, Guzo Malet, Masé Malet, Amin Malet, you know, in the uh, Targum, according to the translation, this will be the journey. And it also is the last reading, I think the tenth, the tenth and the final reading from the book of Numbers, from the book of Numbers or Bemidbar, in the in the Hebrew or Bamarinya, the Orit Ze Hulque, the book of accounting, the book of numbers. So now we have to look at this within its proper context to be able to really receive this. So what we said we was gonna do is basically just announce the fact that of course most of you all probably already know that July twenty third is coming forward, but this July twenty third, twenty eleven is we can say extra special or there's the potentiality for us who can receive in receiving a extra barakat, a barakat, an extra blessing, just by remembering the Senbet day, the Shabbat day, remembering the Senbet day from the perspective of the teaching of His Imperial Majesty, the fact that for my part, for I and I, for our part, 
we glory in the Bible, in the Mets of Caduce, in the B-I-B-L-E. So this is the King's Sabbath, or the King of Kings Sabbath, especially important. The Son of Man, when the Son of Man was revealed or came into this ether, into this atmosphere, and was born July 23rd, 1892. And it's better known, some might more more know this as Rastafari, or Rastafari's birthday, or some even call it Haile Selassie's birthday. Technically, um, we understand, but more correctly, more accurately, it is not the birthday so much of Kedamawi Haile Selassie, but it is the birthday or the earth day when the Son of Man, according to prophecy in Rastafari revelation, was born, or one can say was incarnated. Now, what, what is the significance of this? What is the significance of this? The significance of this, chiefly, the first place we will say that one should um, do some diligence of, of looking at for concerning the, the Son of Man is, is within the testimony of Adonenu Yeshua HaMoshia, who spoke of the Son of Man. Now, many will say, well, he was actually speaking of himself coming forward. That, that's the way a lot of Christians will say that when you find Jesus Christ speaking of the Son of Man, you understand that within the Gospel, New Testament, he is speaking of himself, even though it's very clear that he's speaking of one in the third person. He is speaking of another one. We say within the Revelation of Rastafari, he is speaking of the fatherhood of God become manifest as in his time, in Yeshua's incarnation, manifestation, revelation, it was the sonhood. He was bringing forth the Sonhood, the God in the personality of the Son, or the Spirit of God revealing the Sonship of God. And within the revelation of the Son of Man, we have now the Son of Man revealing the fatherhood of God. As we know that Edomawi Haile Selassie, he is the father of the faithful and true Judeo-Christian Africa. You know, and this is something that we must recognize. Now, within the prophetic scrolls, of Revelation, we have Revelation chapter 12, which is very important concerning the birthday or the earth day of the Son of Man, or what we know as the King's Sabbath, and it's particularly relevant to this particular Sabbath that we're going through. And when we see the signs, and we recognize the signs, in fact, if you go and check, I think it's the 16 signs that we talked about the last days, you can see many of these signs are not just happening one after another, but they are also happening um, not just um, successively, but um, um, co uh, consecutive. You understand? Not, not just one following the next, but happening at the very same time. So in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, here's the significance of the birth of the Son of Man, who we know as Lij Teferi. Rastafari, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, where in Revelation 12 and 5 it speaks of the child. And this child would be the Mushi, or would be the Christ child, the man child. And it says, and she brought forth a man child, or a male child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child, here's the significance concerning Lij Teferi, within the prophecy of Rastafari, that her child, it says in verse 5 of Revelation chapter 12, her child was caught up to God, was caught up to Ha Elohim, was caught up to Egezi Abihar Lotusabhat, was caught up to the true God, Baruku, and to his throne. So was caught up to, so this child, so a, a woman gives birth to a child, right? And it's very interesting because when you look in the Gospels within the. Um, Synoptic as well as within John's mystical gospel, we see something very interesting because this same idea is elsewhere presented of a child being born who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Now, many Christians will say, well, this is Jesus or this is Jesus or Yeshua. It's very clear when we study it that it's not speaking of, as they would say, God the Son but it's speaking of God the Father. 
this is very important. So her child was caught up to who? To God and to his throne. Now, what is the throne of God? Now, many people who are who um, have uh, never read the Bible and therefore don't really know what's really in the Bible, they have not really studied and they cannot understand really the Bible, but they think they understand it. When you ask them, well, right here where it's talking about God's throne, what is God's throne? And what they'll get off into some spiritualizing of the throne of God. They will talk about, well, in heaven and after you die and the pearly gates and so forth and so on. But the truth and the reality is that the throne of God is the throne of David. And here's where the kingdom of David and the renewal, the kingdom of David in the highlands of inner Africa known as Ethiopia, the African Zion, is very important and significant. Because otherwise you would not recognize that the throne of David is the throne of Jehovah or Yahweh. And therefore, is the throne of God. So when we're reading here in Revelation 12 and 5, that this woman who is symbolic of Israel, you understand, she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Now, this woman who we said is significant, synonymous with Israel within the popular Christian interpretations really is Ethiopia as per Psalms 68 verse 31, princess shall come out of Egypt, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands, her hands to God. So there's a relationship which the prophetic, this psalm of David, Psalm 68 is pointing to, which was fulfilled in King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Menelik. Now we have here that there's a man child who was to be born. He's to rule all nations, rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God. What does that mean, that the child was caught up to God? Did the child leave the earth? Are we to interpret that the child went into outer space, into his throne, out in the, those heavens? Or is it more scripturally, metaphorical, allegorical, and in speaking of the throne of David, which was renewed in Ethiopia? Now, verse 6 is a significant. It says, And the woman fled into the wilderness. And the woman did what? This woman, she fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of her Elohim, and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now, this is also very significant. This is very, very significant. Now, within the revelation, we see Lij Teferi. But we also can see within this prophetic word, it's pointing to a certain period of time. And now when we measure this period of time, it's very important to really understand what's the significance of this King Sabbath, speaking about the Sabbath coming up, which will be July 23rd, 2011. The Son of Man Day or Rastafari, Rastafari's Earth Day, or what ones will call the birthday of Haile Selassie the First. So being that this is a Shabbat, this is a Sabbath, you know, it was a Sabbath day. And also, for the 43rd reading, Torah reading, Torah portion reading, which is Guzo, notice what Guzo means. Guzo means the journey. Guzo means the journey. Now, we have Numbers chapter 33, Numbers chapter 33, verse 1. Let's just go there for a moment to find what the significant, the significant verse here basically says. So let's turn our Bibles, let's rightly divide the word of truth, and let's turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 33 to read and recall and reflect. This is why it says to remember the Senbet day. As you said, there's a, this is a double blessed, if not triply blessed day. You understand this Shabbat day, if it's received, if it's perceived, one, and if it's received in the spirit and the truth of the King of Kings and His Christ. So here's, here's, here's what's the reading. Remember, this is the Thursday going into Friday. We're in this heat wave. And we're noticing that this heat wave is, 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 it is, it is crazy. This, this heat wave that is going through America, like all of America is literally on fire. You understand? And it's creating certain conditions that are going to help fulfill those 16 signs especially regarding the famine signs. We're already seeing it in the Horn of Africa on one hand. And yes, we have a word about the Somali, Somalian famine, the famine situation that's happening there, because all you need to do is refer to um, Psalm 68, the same psalm. We're using this one psalm to prove this prof prophetic time that we're in, because it speaks about the rebellious dwelling in a, what? A, a dry land. 
what? The rebellious dwell on the dry land? Are, are we saying that this is a, a, a curse of God? Well, God is not cursing. He lays down the law. Ones can be law-abiding or ones can be rebellious. And if you're rebellious, you brought that, in other words, on yourself. It's not like he, you understand, cursed you, but you cursed yourself. You understand? So the, the curse is for disobedience that the once lost but now found Beta Israel. You understand the Beta Israel, the Ethiopian Hebrews, the black Jews here in the Americas and the Caribbean that we brought on, our, our ancestors brought on themselves, and now we have an opportunity, you understand, not to repeat the mistakes of the past and to move in the newness of the King of Kings and His Christ. This is the choice and decision that we have right now, just like the Beta Israel in the upcoming Torah portion that we're doing a little preview right now. Here's a summary. In chapter 33 of Numbers is the summary of the journeys from Egypt to Jordan. So in this chapter we have a summary. Now the fact that the Sabbath coming up is July 23rd is significant. The fact that this is a Sabbath before 2012 is also significant. The fact that in 1993, yours truly, Ras Yadinos Teferi, formerly known as Ras Adonijah by ones and ones and ones of Lanju society, that we had proclaimed the King's Sabbath from such a time. And we spoke about there would be those years of, of, of plenty and of blessing. And then there will also be years of, of drought. And it seems like right now we are going through these years of drought. But we have to understand that this is still, for the true and the faithful, the perfect opportunity to come out. To come out of Babylon, to come out of this spiritual Egypt, you understand, and to move towards the border and to move towards our promised land. We're speaking about Exodus. Some can call it repatriation. You understand? Some can call it migration. In biblical terms, we're talking about Exodus. Therefore, the template for us is scriptural because it's an agreement with the teaching of His Majesty and His. Glory, as he says, for his part, he glories in the Bible. So the first verse of the upcoming King's Sabbath, July 23rd, 2011 reading and feeding is this. It says, these are the journeys of the children of Israel, the Bani Yisrael, or Yisrael Lejot, or the Dikika Israel, which went forth out of the land of Egypt. Now we have to recall that in this time, we're in the Egypt, but really spiritual Egypt, but it's the north country. Therefore, in the book of Jeremiah, it talks about the future fastika, the future coming out. No longer will they say, blessed bless be the Lord, our God, Yahai, Yahai, Jalib, Jalib, who brought us out of Egypt, but who brought us out of the what? The north country, first and foremost, and all of the what countries that we have been scattered in. So we're in a very prophetic time, 20, it's like the doors, we're, it's at the very doors. So here it says that these are the journeys, the guzo, you understand, the masse of the children of Israel which went forth out of the land of Egypt with what? Their armies. So there's a, there's a need for order, there's a need for organization, there's a need for the true Arastafari church. In order to be triumphant, we as Ethiopian Hebrews, according to the scripture, in tune with the template that the Almighty has laid out before us, we need to be militant. The church needs to be militant, and this is the structure right here. So when we read here, it says, the children of Israel which went forth out of the land of Egypt with their what? Their armies, the Sarawit, with their Tabaot, which their armies under the hand the first generation was under the hand of Musa, of Moses and Haron, of Moses and Haron. And Moses wrote their goings out, their goings out, the coming forth by day. That he wrote for us the Beta Israel for a new age and a new generation. You know what I'm saying? He wrote their goings out according to the journeys by the what? The commandment of Yod. Hey, wow, hey, of Yahweh. And these are their journeys according to their goings out. Now, this is a very important section here. 
and there's and there's and there's much to be acquired. You understand know in studying it. The main point is we're we're showing right here the almost like a trifecta. You understand? First is the Sabbath day. Then is the memorial Metasebia for the King of Kings, Lij Teferi for the Son of Man's birthday. You understand? And then it's foreshadowing. Notice something else. It's foreshadowing the 2012. Speaking of what we prophesied as the King Sabbath from 1993. And we have all that documentation to show ones and ones, you understand, that this was proclaimed and we're seeing, we're living to see a prophetic fulfillment of it. You know, when one makes a prophecy and it comes to pass, there is a certain amount of, what we say in this case, joy. In some cases of prophecy, there's, there's not a lot of joy because maybe if one didn't listen to it. So this is a, this is a prophecy um, um, in progress. In other words, we're living in a PIP time. Prophecies are in progress. And this is a significant sign right here. You understand? The King of Kings birthday, Hala Selassie's birthday, Lich Tafari, the Son of Man's birthday, now being on the Sabbath day, 2011. And the sabbatical reading is 43, which is speaking of the guzo, the journey, and the basic message here is prepare for Exodus. This is our, have been our basic message, prepare for Exodus. Now, what is very, very important as well as significant is that when we look at another related chart that is speaking to these next 9 to 10 years, Something else that's very, very significant is that 2011 A.D. was said to be the possible first year of the Great Tribulation. We're telling you that according to, according to the signs that we are seeing, it is this first year. We've already entered into this present time. Look at, look, look at everything carefully. You understand? Look at your nightly news, and if you're not blind, you will be able to see it. You understand? Now, if you study the Word, you can really get to know it, you understand? Because you will be studying and showing yourself approved. So, this upcoming King's Sabbath is very important, brothers and sisters. And how are, what are we going to do? We've been asked, well, what are we going to do? What, uh, what sort of activities? The main thing is to remember. You understand? There has to be a certain mental ascent. You understand? It's to remember. You understand? It's a certain perception. A certain perception that begins with the mind and with the heart and with the spirit that begins to open up the upper and the higher gates in the spirit of our mind. And then we're able to receive. You see, if you cannot perceive it, you cannot receive it because you don't know it and you're ignorant of it. One must be sent to you, just like the prophets were sent, you were sent to point them in the right, to show them the vision, to show them, listen. This is the vision. This is the way in which we are to walk in it. So, brothers and sisters, there's more to come on this important um, King Sabbath time. And we have already entered into this uh, prophetic period of the Great Tribulation. You see this, uh, um, this nine, um, this nine uh, lamp menorah here. And it says there's the, there's the Hallel or the there's the Elita um, Mesmorato Psalms. It's a prophetic timeline. This is a prophetic timeline, or let's just say a possible prophetic timeline. Remember, it's PIP, it's Prophecy in Progress. This is a prophetic timeline for the Great Tribulation. Now, when you look at the second, the second branch of the candelabrum, of the candle, or what's known as the candelabrum, or really the lampstand, the more correct name that's called the, uh, a candlestick is really a lampstand, because really a lamp light, not wax light, but oil light, is a point, a point which needs to be noted. But if you look at the second branch of this lampstand, you will see that it says Psalm 111. It says 2011 A.D., then there's the arrow that says possible first year of the Great Tribulation. Those that put this together, I think it was a Messianic um, Jewish sister that had put this together, excuse me, and put this together previously, 
You understand? She already put this together. Now, when we checked this out, we was on the same sort of meditation, but we didn't have any visual, you understand, any any visual um, aid like this to utilize. This is very, very important. So, but in addition to the fire key psalms, there are certain psalms that are known as a fire key psalm. Now, ones have asked I and I about Bingy, whether this is a time, you know, for Bingy. We say this is a time to keep the Sabbath, you understand, holy, to remember to keep the Sabbath holy. Do you understand? It, there's a very important um, teaching in this. Um, we are not saying, telling people what they got to do, like we're giving them extra commandments. What we're saying is that what we in the society will do for this particular sentiment, most and most important, other than going out there and going to a bingi or going to this or that, is to keep it, to remember it and keep it quietly as even a solemn, especially in going into it, seeing that the Friday which is tomorrow, it begins this process off. And it's only a couple of hours. Maybe some of y'all will get this before that time. Some of y'all may get it after that time. But still, it's better to get it later than not to get it at all. So share this with your friends and your family. We are entering into, as we're in this prophecy and progress season, a really time period, we are entering into this time of the Great Tribulation and all of the signs in heaven and earth and the sea, among men and politics and government, at home, abroad, there's a famine and a drought going on in America. There's a famine and a drought going on in, 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 in Africa, in the Horn of Africa. There's famine and drought going on all over the place. And so we've we got to recognize this. And please, brothers and sisters, do not allow these false witnesses, these who will say, well, uh, you don't want to go to Africa because people are starving in Africa, you understand? Even if they look Rasta-ish, you know, they're one of these pop, you know, pop, you know, Rasta, like pop Rasta kind of characters, you know, out there. Don't believe the lie, my brothers and sisters. The thing is that either you are in or you're out, you understand? And, and the decision is all yours, but if you're going to come in, then please study the, the manual, you understand? Um, study and show yourself approved, you understand? So you'll know your rights, your responsibility, your blessings, you understand? Within the Father's house, our Father's house, in the name of Adonenu, your Hoshua, Yeshua, HaMushia, otherwise known as Getachina, Met Hanatachin, Jesus Christos. So brothers and sisters, prepare, prepare. The Exodus is near, it's near.